How's it going everybody? Corbin here. Thank you so much for checking out the video today. We're going to be going over this uh, laundry room renovation that we just went through. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. It means the world to me. And also don't forget to like the video if you love the renovation. Let's jump right in. So here's what our laundry room looked like before the renovation. As you can see, it was just very plain and empty. Just had the washer and dryer inside there. No storage or no, basically anything. So the first thing we did was go pick up a cabinet from our local hardware store. We got some primer to be able to roll it up so that we could change the color of the paint. At first we wanted to go with kind of like a really bold um, green color, but that didn't end up working out. So here we are priming it right now, right before we painted it and changed our mind. Well, we were trying to go bold with some green. Um, <laughs> turns out we don't really like it, so we're gonna change up the color here. So we ended up going with this brownish gray called Park Avenue, and I'm glad we ended up going this route. It was just a, a nicer color and really blended in well with the stone that we ended up choosing. So here I am just going through and rolling it and painting the cabinet. Okay, so we got this all painted. This color actually turned out really good. Um, and it, it went on really smooth painting this way. Now we're onto the doors though. Um, and my plan is to just come in here and grab this brush and then brush it through and um, then take the roller and roll it on here. Um, Anybody who's painted cabinets before might be cringing at that, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so I had no idea how these cabinets were really going to turn out the way I was painting them, but it actually turned out pretty well just using the paintbrush and the roller. Of course, if you do have a sprayer, I would recommend going that route. It would make this job a lot cleaner and a lot easier as well, but I just don't have a sprayer, so this is the, the route that I went, and I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. And after I was done with the first one, I just went on to the second door and did the same thing. Once the paint was dry, it was time to hang up the cabinet. I was doing this by myself, so I did learn about this trick where you basically get like a 2x4 or another piece of wood um, and screw it into the wall. It helps keep the wall level, or keeps the cabinet level, and also allows you to kind of hold it in place while you screw um, your screws into the studs there. So I ended up screwing into two studs, two screws into each stud, and that thing is super sturdy, not going anywhere. So I'm going to kind of put these here for now. I need to actually go through and uh, sand and stain these pieces of wood, but I'm just going to put them down so I can start um, using the Tic Tac tiles. Um, I'm going to show you these things in a minute. They're freaking awesome. But we're going to, we're, I'm just going to put these on here so I have a starting point for the tiles that I'm going to put on. Because essentially from here up is all going to be um, tile, uh, which I think is going to look super dope. So we're going to put these up here. And basically what I'm thinking, Instead of uh, doing like a shelf all the way through, I wanted to kind of do something different. So I'm gonna put this right here and kind of box it in. I don't know, is that completely unnecessary? I think it looks good, but uh, it's just something different here. I could just keep this piece not attached at all and just have two different shelves. Um, but I kind of like the, I like the clean look of just um, attaching it through. That way when I run the tiles too, I have a really clean spot to kind of go through. So. Um, that's what this is going to look like, and I'm excited to see what it looks like after it's stained and everything. So I went through and did some sanding before I started staining. For the stain color, I used Golden Pecan from Verithane, uh, one of my favorite stains to use. And for reference, these are common boards. They are 8 inches wide and 12 inches wide, and then you cut them to the length that you need. I did end up doing two coats of stain for the color that I wanted, because I wanted it a little bit darker than just the one coat. So here the shelf is hitting up against the outlet, but obviously I need to be able to plug in the washer or the, yeah, the washing machine. So I'm just marked where the outlet's at. I'm going to cut this out with the jigsaw so that the outlet can, or the plug can come through and plug right in, in here. Okay, we got our shelf in. So we have the brackets holding this up here. And then I did a miter on a 45 degree. Um, right here I put a little bit of wood glue and then I uh, actually hit a couple of brad nails inside of there so um, I shot a brad nail in there and then we have our space cut out for our outlet so that we can plug it in obviously after this is all said and done and then I wanted a little bit of thicker of a shelf right here so um, that's where this 12 inch piece comes in so that we can put more laundry detergent and heavier stuff um, inside of here so now it is time to start tiling this whole thing um, up inside it on this wall all right, and for the backsplash, we are, today we're actually be using these uh, Tic Tac tiles. Um, they have tiles, of course, obviously by the name, but these are actually um, stone 
kind of uh, tiles, for lack of a better word. And check these out. So um, it's peel and stick. So all you need to do is peel it and stick it on the wall. And look how thin um, these are. Super thin. Super easy to cut. Um, but it's it's like real stone. Like it, 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 once you look at it, it just feels and looks like real stone. So I'm excited to be using these today. Um, thanks to that tile for sending some of these. So we're gonna put these on the wall um, and kind of go through and stick them up. I'll kind of show you the process of how I use these. But I'm really impressed with uh, how these how these look so far. So I'm excited to get them on the wall. Let's give it a go. Here we go. Starting with the first tile. Always exciting. And just like with any tiling, with the first row, you're going to want to make sure that this is level because you will be building the rest of the tiles essentially on this first row. So it's important to take your time, make sure that you have it level, and everything looks good. Okay, so as you can see here, we got the outlet, so I need to cut out a little bit of a, a gap so that the out we can fit this tile right over the outlet. And check out how easy this is. So I got a pair of snips, and I'm going to take this. I marked off where I want to cut. And I'm going to come through. If you wanted a more straight cut, you could use like a ruler or something. We're just going to come right along here. And I actually want to go a little bit in from those marks. And I'll be sure to leave a link to those tin snips and the tiles as well, just in case anybody wanted to get the exact same layout and tools. And after I was done cutting out that outlet, I did realize that I did want to actually, before I stuck that to the wall, build up the lower levels from that lower shelf first, the couple of rows there, and then attach where that outlet was at. That way it could rest right on top of the uh, previous, or the lower tiles. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. So here I am going to the lower shelf and making sure that it's level there, and then making a couple cuts so that when I put the tiles on that outlet, then they'll just rest right on top of them. Be sure to take your time when going around the outlets to make sure that it looks good and that the cuts are right. You'll notice here that um, the tiles start to stick to the wall a little bit and I'm able to actually remove the tile and stick it back on. So they are pretty forgiving, but just be sure to take your time and make sure that it looks good according to what you need. But as you see, I'm just ripping off the tile a little bit here and adjusting it as I need to uh, and everything looks great. Once the first level is down, it's just about getting into a groove and from here on out, it actually went really fast. Okay, and when we get to a point like this again, uh, where we have a corner, I just overlap it. I'm marking where I need to cut. And then I'm grabbing the snips and just going through and cutting it. Some of these tiles are a little bit thicker, so they're harder, like you see this one, like it's a little bit harder to cut. So whenever you're trying to do this, I recommend trying to find cuts where you can get in the middle and have the thinner tiles inside of here. Um, just so it makes it a little bit easier to cut because those thicker ones can be kind of a pain as you see that one right there that I was having trouble with is a little bit thicker. Now we just take it, unpeel this guy. Things are coming along. This stuff looks so good. I mean look at like I just love the 3D effect that it has on the wall. I'm excited to see how it all turns out. Just like that, the wall was done. I love the 3D effect that these tiles have and how easy they were to install. So definitely go check out Tic Tac Tiles if you haven't already. I'll leave a link to the exact tile that I got in the description down below. Last thing to do was to decorate and put the final touches on.